Hello, today we're going to talk about the woods and perfumery. Um, I don't have time to do a video intro, so I'm just going to go straight into it. So, woods are defined as the trunk or branch material of a tree or a shrub. Now, in perfumery, um, the woods that we call woods aren't all actually woods, if that makes sense. Some of them are mosses and some of them are roots. Um, but they all give the same woody impression and they're mostly bass notes. So they fit into the same olfactory territory. Now, this category, woods, is laid out in Jean-Claude Elena's book, Perfume. Um, and if you don't know, Jean-Claude Elena is a really famous perfumer. Now, he divides the woods into five different subcategories. This is sandalwood, patchouli, vetiver, cedar, um, and lichen. Now, I've covered cedar wood in my previous video on conifer woods, um, and that's because there are a lot of other woods which fit into the conifer category. Um, so I'll put a link in the description for that. Um, but in this video, I am going to cover the other four. So patchouli, um, that's actually a tropical herb related to mint, but it's very widely used in perfumery and it gives quite a woody impression when you smell it. Um, oak moss, so that is a form of lichen. Um, and this tree extract is very traditionally used in lots of different types of perfume. I'm going to look at sandalwood, which is one of the most expensive woods in the world, um, and it's native to both India and Australia. And then vetiver, which is actually the root of a fragrant grass. Again, this is native to India, and it's very commonly used in perfumery as a base note. Um, and then I'm going to also throw in two additional ones. I'm going to look at oak wood and tobacco. Now these are both used much less frequently, however they still fit into the same olfactory territory. So firstly I'm going to look at patchouli, in a sense. Um, I'm not actually going to look at patchouli, I'm going to look at a patchouli replacer. And this is called clear wood. Now this is something manufactured by Firminich, one of the biggest fragrance companies in the world and it's actually a patented white biotechnology pro process from the fermentation of sugarcane. However, what is uh, left in the mixture is essentially something rich in patchouli oil, according to their technical disclosure. And by all intents and purposes, it's something that um, is very similar to patchouli. Apparently, this is meant to smell a lot cleaner um, and less earthy than actual patchouli. However, I didn't find this to be the case. What I found was it was something that smelled very earthy um, and almost a bit woolen or a bit moldy. I found that um, the ethanol actually at the beginning overpowered the smell of uh, this bass note itself. However, after a long time, that earthiness really starts to come out when the ethanol's gone. And then it stays for a really, really long time on the scent strip. Even at 0.1%, it lasted for 11 days and was still detectable. What I did find is that at a lower concentration, it smelled much nicer, much more closer to wool than that earthy moldiness. Just for those of you who want to know what actual patchouli smells like, um, that I would say is quite a herbaceous, earthy. Um, it's a smell that is you, you would probably recognize actually, it's um, very commonly associated with hippies um, and, you know, hippie shops, the 60s, that kind of thing. Um, and the reason for that is because it was something that was bought back by people going on voyages to um, Asia back in the 60s quite commonly. And something that was impregnated in the fabrics that they bought back to keep the moths away. Um, and also it's been used in the past for covering up the smell of weed and things like that. Right, next we have oak moss. Now, oak moss is extremely important in perfumery because it's a fundamental note in the composition of chypres and fougeres. Now, chypres and fougeres are two of the most traditional types of fragrance composition. So someone studying perfumery would probably learn these classic compositions at an early stage in their training when they're starting to blend things together. Now, in more recent years, it has been discovered that um, the natural extract of oak moss actually contains uh, certain components um, such as atronol and chloroatronol, which are actually hazardous to human health. So what has happened is the use of it has essentially been banned in its uh, pure form. To get around this, um, 
some companies have created a special kind of extract of oak moss which has had those dangerous components essentially removed. Now this safe, safer kind of extract is allowed at up to 0.1% in perfumes according to the IFRA guidelines. However, it is more expensive and a lot of perfumers say that it's not as good in terms of its olfactory quality. So I would note that if you're not interested in selling your perfumes commercially, um, you, you could in theory use as much of it as you wanted to get that more traditional fragrance. Uh, the safety of that I could not really say, um, but a lot of people seem to think that it's fine. In reality, who knows? Anyway, as for the evaluation, I found that um, at all concentration levels, it did last in the region of 11 days, which is the longest time frame I look at because at this point it's clearly a base note and is going to last longer than most other things. And it smelled at lower concentrations, quite undescribable in a sense, but um, very velvety. Um, I would say magical, even though that is not clearly a very useful descriptor. And then as you increase the concentration, I found it got a lot more earthy and sweaty. Um, but on the flip side of that, when you left it then for a very long time, it almost became a little bit tea-like or something. Um, and also I just wanted to mention that the composition of this, um, well it's made up um, to about 50% of a single aroma chemical called Evanil. Um, and this is a synthetic base note which captures some of that character present within the oak moss um, and I find this extremely useful to use um, so I'll probably do a future video of some synthetics but um, the Evanil on its own is definitely a very interesting raw material. Okay, next up we're going to look at oak wood. Now oak wood is not very commonly used in perfumery at all, probably part of that is because it's so expensive. Um, and what you do to get it is you take a load of oak chips, you toast them a bit, and then you get some CO2, you change it into a supercritical fluid by chemistry, and then you use that as a solvent to extract it out of the wood. So uh, this I found to be more of a mid-note. It definitely didn't last as long as uh, probably all the other, the other woods in this video. However, it was definitely really, really nice. Um, now, it's unclear exactly what makes up oak wood, just because there's because it's so uncommonly used, there's not so much information on it, um, it's not studied so much, however it is studied in the context of wine, because obviously oak barrels um, are used in the making sometimes of wine, and the wine industry is very large, and from what I could find on the effects of oak barrels on wine, essentially says that certain chemicals are found um, in the wine due to the oak barrels, um, and that would be vanillin, oak lactone, eugenol, iso eugenol, uh, and fewer furel, and these are all used in perfumery. So vanillin smells a bit like vanilla, eugenol smells a bit like cloves, and fewer furel smells a bit like butterscotch or caramel. So um, yeah, potentially you could sketch out the oak wood using some synthetics, maybe you could use vanillin, eugenol, and some kind of butterscotch accord. Um, and then just make a few more changes from there and who knows it could be a good good exercise Anyway, um, what did it smell like? It smells it smells kind of like whiskey a little bit probably because whiskey's put in barrels as well um, And it definitely had a vanilla facet. So I would say between those two Then next is sandalwood so sandalwood again is fairly expensive um, and there's two different types. There's the Australian type and the Indian type. Um, and in general, it's the Australian type which is sustainably produced and also cheaper. So probably in general, the best one to use, um, even though that maybe the Indian one could smell better. Um, I think it's an endangered species. Um, anyway, so you just take the wood and you steam distill it and you get your sandalwood oil out. Um, and it's definitely a base note, lasts pretty long, lasts about 11 hours on the scent strip, or longer, because I don't check past then. Um, and it smelled, it smells woody, definitely, um, but it does have this kind of, a bit of a freshness to it. Um, a bit of a uranus note, honestly, at the high concentrations, which I didn't really expect, but apparently that is due to the beta santalol, which is one of the constituents, if you look at the composition. 
Now there are a lot of synthetics that are used in creating sandalwood like chords or sandalwood notes um, and that's mostly because of the price right of the sandalwood um, and it turns out it's fairly easy to make a lot of different sandalwood like smelling odorants um, and this is because if you look at santalol alpha and beta the constituents that particular structure um, well it turns out it's easy in chemistry to make a lot of other chemical structures which are very very similar and turn out to smell the same um, so a lot of synthetic sandalwood odorants aren't actually found in sandalwood at all but they smell like it because of their similarity to the alpha and beta santalol uh, i just thought that was an interesting fact so yeah next is tobacco now tobacco um, is again not so commonly used and it's the way it's extracted is you take the tobacco and then from that you do a hydrocarbon extraction which gives you something called a concrete and then you use ethanol to do a second extraction on that as far as i'm aware and that gives you your tobacco absolutes i mean obviously with all materials you can extract them in different ways but i'm pretty sure that's how the one that i was using was extracted and i think that's fairly common um, so this one came from Bulgaria um, and it was the Virginian variety of tobacco so I would say I guess that's often grown in Virginia itself um, and there are a few different varieties of tobacco um, and what it smelled like was very at the lower concentrations like tobacco rolling tobacco itself however as you go up it became very much more grassy and hay like um, and then as for the composition this is, it turns out, one of the most complex materials in perfumery. It's got over 3,000 different compounds found in the extract. Um, so the question really is um, more what isn't in it than is. I mean, there's no major constituent that gives it its characteristic smell. Maybe it's a bit like a brown in painting, right? You just put all the colours in and you get out a brown. And brown can be nice, you know? So nothing wrong with that. But yeah, there's no, there's nothing really quite like tobacco in the world of synthetics. And finally, we are going to look at vetiver. Now, vetiver is again a common base note, and this comes from a root. So there's this type of grass that's grown. Well, it comes from Indonesia and mostly grown in Indonesia. And you take the grass, you pull it up, you get out the root, you wash the roots. Um, and then you, you cut and you dry them and then you do the steam distillation and then you get out your vetiver oil. Now the vetiver oil isn't super expensive but it's not the cheapest thing either so I would say it's kind of a mid price um, and it's very warm woody smell however I noticed that there were facets of nuttiness and smokiness maybe this of you know obviously like all naturals right it depends on the exact vetiver maybe they have different facets um, and as for the composition it's again very complex but alpha and beta vetivone do make up a significant portion of the composition um, and something else called cusimone isn't a major constituent but it does make or contribute to a significant um, amount of the actual odor profile I've heard. Right, I've gone on about these different types of words more than long enough, so that's that's all I'm going to say. Um, but hopefully this video gives you a good idea of what kind of words you might want to, you know, you might want to get if you're doing perfume and you might want to add to your perfumery palette um, because, you know, some are expensive, so if you don't like the sound of them, don't get them. Um, and yeah, that's it. So please like the video because it helps it helps me reach more people who care about all of this random stuff um, so I would much appreciate it anyway um, the next video is going to be on spices and that is the last video I'm going to do on naturals for the while so if you're interested in that stay tuned 